Welcome guys, Matimus here with you again. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. As always guys, I would love it if you could leave a comment if you did enjoy today's video and hit the like button. And if you do wish to be notified of any future gaming or military review content videos from my channel coming up in the future, please hit the notification bell by the subscribe button. And if you do wish to support the channel, go check out my Patreon account. It would be really appreciated. Um, as always, thank you in advance. So today we are talking about main battle tanks again and yes a Russian beast the T-80 main battle tank one tank of which I think gets a lot of hate just similar to the T-90 and pretty much most Russian vehicles from the Western world. We all know why the T-80 gets a little bit more hate than some of the other vehicles. It's due to its gas turbine engine. And today we're going to talk about its history, a bit of its specifications, and my own personal opinion on this vehicle, just to give you guys my stance on this incredible Russian main battle tank. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the T-80's history and how it came to be. The development of the T-80 main battle tank started in the Soviet era, with the tank entering service in 1976. The T-80 was the first production tank in the world to be equipped with a gas turbine engine. At first, Western analysts confused it with the T-72 as they looked quite similar, but actually the two tanks were rather different. Actually, the two tanks were product of two different design bureaus. The tank was designed and manufactured at the Leningrad Kirov plant or LKZ under the direction of Nikolai S. Popov, with the production prototype being designated the Object 219. The T-80 is a development of the Russian main battle tank T-64. The T-72 and the T-80 are quite similar in superficial appearance, but the T-80 is based on the earlier T-64 design whilst incorporating features from the T-72. The T-80B and T-80BV MBTs were used during the First Chechen War. The first real combat experience for the T-80 and some of the biggest losses were suffered during the ill-fated assault on the city of Grozny. The reasons for that included the fact that the forces selected to capture Grozny were not really that well prepared for such an operation, while the city was defended by, among others, veterans of the Soviet war in Afghanistan. The T-80 tanks used in this operation either did not have reactive armour, or it was not fitted before the start of the operation, and the T-80 crews lacked sufficient training for this particular kind of environment before the war. At the end of the 40s, gas turbine engines had gained a decisive victory in aviation. It came to no surprise that when soon after the first attempts were made to install them into land vehicles, Special Design Bureau of the Kirov plant started in 1948-1949 to for a gas turbine tank. But the vehicle did not meet many of the military requirements, especially fuel consumption and power to weight ratio, which we have all pretty much designated the key fault of this main battle tank. However, there are some specifications that do need to be taken into consideration. During the 50s, there was a great interest in gas turbines, both in the Soviet Union and in the West. During this period, there are many civil engineering projects with gas turbine motors in locomotives, trucks and even cars. The military industry did not stay behind and in 1955, plans started working on two 52-55 ton heavy tanks. The Object 277 with a diesel engine and an Object 278 with a gas turbine engine. However, the work was stopped in 1960 because the Soviet industry redirected its focus towards main battle tanks. In addition, the designers were unable to get rid of gas turbine teething problems, including poor efficiency and air intake filtering problems. For this reason, there was no mass production of the gas turbine version of the T-64T, which was created at the same time as the diesel version. The T-80, the world's first mass-produced main battle tank with a gas turbine engine, was designed to break through enemy defences and carry out strikes at the most protected areas using its excellent mobility, speed to produce devastating firepower, but increased mobility on the battlefield. In addition, the advantage of a low silhouette of this tank and the fact that the vehicle was therefore extremely hard to spot was a very, very key attribute. However, the noise of the gas turbine engine could be the only thing heard behind the tank, meaning it could also be used potentially for minor reconnaissance. The original T-80 was powered by a 1000 horsepower D-1000T engine. Its armour was quite similar to the T-64A, a welded body, cast turret, upper front plate and turret made of composite armour. The main weapon was a 2A46-1 gun slash launcher with an automatic loader system. The loader system was borrowed from the T-64 and is different from the automatic loader of the T-72 and T-90 tanks. A major upgrade called the T-80B appeared in 1978 with a whole range of improvements compared to the basic models. 
and since then many different modifications have been produced. Some special cases worth mentioning are the T-80BV and the T-80U 1985, which became the main Soviet and later Russian tanks, and the T-80UD 1987 produced in the Kharkiv plant and serving as a basis for the modern Ukrainian tanks. A total of over 10,000 T-80 tanks of various different modifications were produced, many of which still serve in armies in several countries around the world. Despite the fact that T-80 became one of the most numerous tanks after the Second World War, it has not been used that much really in combat. These tanks were used in the First Chechen War, and some reports did say that they had been used during the 2015 conflict in Yemen. One famous episode in which we saw the T-80 was the shelling of the House of Government of the Russian Federation in 1993. The gas turbine engine proved to be much sturdier than the diesel engine overall. It was less vulnerable to temperature changes. It was not knocked out by engine compartment flooding and was less likely to stall if the vehicle got stuck. Furthermore, it provided the tank with astonic dynamic characteristics, 70 km an hour on road and 60 through rough terrain for the T-80U, and riding smoothness that served well when the vehicle was firing on the move. But despite so many advantages, it had a very serious shortcoming. Even with the most modern gas turbine engine, it still consumes so much fuel. These tanks with such engines are gradually being replaced by diesel models, as we're seeing on modern tanks like the T-14 Armata. The Russian army is currently and gradually decommissioning T-80 tanks. The tanks that are still operational are upgraded and returned to service, but it looks like these too soon will be replaced by more modern tanks. Some of the standard equipment included on this vehicle are snorkels for deep fording operations which are carried on the turret rear when not in requirement. There is also the overtight pressure MBC protection system with night vision equipment also for all three crew members. There is an unditching beam carried across the hull rear and a laser warning device activated by laser rangefinders if being lased. Mounted on the turret rear is a large circular container which carries two snorkels. The larger one is the snorkel for the gas turbine, with another being fitted onto the radiator grill by means of two adapters. This provides an air intake for the gas turbine. To extend the operational range of the T-80, additional various drum type fuel tanks can be mounted on the back of the vehicle hull rear. These fuel tanks were quite prominent on most main battle tanks of this era and were easily jettisoned if necessary. Each of these fuel drums carried around 300 litres of fuel and were connected to the main fuel supply all the time. The main armament of the T-80 is composed with the 125mm 2A46 smoothbore gun as the T-72 with a horizontal ammunition stowage system. The T-80's automatic loader holds up to 28 rounds of two-part ammunition in a carousel located under the turret floor. Additional ammunition is stored within the turret, and the ammunition comprises of the projectile of APF-SDS, heat or HE frag, plus the propellant separated for each loading type. The autoloader was quite effective and quite reliable, and pretty much combat tested since the mid-1960s. The loading process takes between 7.1 and 19.5 seconds depending on the initial position of the carousel. With the T-80B, it was its first evolution of the basic type and came quite quickly, which was characterised by its new turret integrating new laser range finding systems, fire control systems, and even the new autoloader modified to operate the 9M112-1 Cobra anti-tank guided missile system. This was accredited for accuracy up to 80% hits on the move. On the protection side, improved composite armour was used. The 125mm ammunition is common to the T-64, T-72, T-80, T-84 and T-90 MBTs. The 125mm smoothbore gun is stabilised in both elevation and traverse. Armament also includes a 7.62 PKT coaxial machine gun and a 12.7mm UTES NSVT-12.7 air defence machine gun. One bank of also 81mm electrically operated smoke grenade dischargers are mounted on either side of the turret, 5 on the left and 4 on the right. This vehicle only has a crew of 3 with the obvious autoloader system being in place. There are many countries that utilise this tank, including Belarus, Cyprus, Kazakhstan, South Korea, Pakistan, Russia, Ukraine, Yemen to name a few. The T-80 in its basic configuration weighs in at a roughly 42.5 tonnes with a range of 335 kilometres and an extra 440 kilometres with the additional fuel drums. 
The dimensions are 9.9 .9 meters long, 3.4 meters wide, and 2.2 meters tall, which increases its potential for being nice and low in those hold down positions to engage other tanks. So guys, there you have it, the T-80, an impressive tank that's really been given a bit of a stigma like most Russian tanks have been in the past. Honestly, I do feel that they really took on some initiative and innovative thinking to try and put a more powerful engine and really trying to get more out of something that's a little smaller, being a gas turbine engines. Clearly, it definitely has the power ratio. Uh, I know that working with engines that I actually work in my everyday, producing aircraft engines, they're extremely powerful. However, they do produce their own difficulties in terms of fuel consumption, and sometimes that's quite important on the battlefield. Clearly, that 125 millimeter gun is doing its job very, very nicely, and I love love the fact that these guns can fire long-range anti-tank guided missiles capable of knocking targets out from quite a distance and that's really imperative and some really good accurate results with those weapon systems too. We're looking at a vehicle really that has unfortunately seen its day though and as we can see that the Russian military is starting to replace them. It seems like it will go into the history books as a tank that was given a bit of a stigma from having not only the bad engine but unfortunately being put into situations where it wasn't really given its best heads up. Uh, it was noted that some of the explosive reactive bricks that were placed onto some of the vehicles that were fitted with it in uh, campaigns that was placed in weren't even fitted with explosives or the correct equipment um, to be able to defeat against RPGs and such, hence why so many were lost in certain conflicts. However, I find this vehicle to be absolutely amazing considering what they've actually tried to do with it in terms of its mobility. I really do think it's a very, very key player in the main battle tank world for its day. Was it able to punch through as quickly as we think it would have back in the day? Who knows? And let's be honest, let's be glad that it never had to happen. Uh, seeing hundreds of these things charging towards a battle group of the Western world would be a pretty daunting thing to see. And it would definitely charge the fear in the back of my mind seeing these things coming towards me if I was in any main battle tank crew, potentially in the Cold War era. And like I said, I'm just glad it never happened. But this would for sure be a formidable asset against any Western main battle tank, and I think even still to this day. But as the powers may be, it seems as though the Russian military really did not want to stick to the gas turbine scene and going back to the heavy duty diesel engines, which I am in love with also. It's interesting guys, because from a mechanical mindset, I work with gas turbine engines in my day to day and used to work with heavy diesel engines, um, you know, back in my military career. So it is interesting to see them trying to combine both tanks and turbines. I must admit, I really do feel that turbine engines are extremely, extremely both reliable and powerful. Unfortunately, they do have their own hindrances, whether it be air filtration and trying to make sure those turbines are nice and clean, or just the pure fuel that they do have to consume, especially on a vehicle like this is that is requiring so much torque um, and on-demand power on and off, on and off, on and off. It's really just not helping for fuel, whereas an aircraft, you know, it's a steady flow of fuel for the most part when cruising. Tanks need to go up hills, slow down, idle for a long time. All these sort of things really do take a lot of uh, fuel out of the system and provide for a really inefficient overall tank um, drivable engine at the end of the day, which I guess is why Russia really decided not to go with it anymore. Um, and I, I commend them for that. Which is really interesting seeing now that the T-14 Armata and such is coming out with that big old heavy diesel engine and I guess they're just sticking to what's true and reliable to the tanks that they've always been used to, both the T-72 and older vehicles and even some of the newer ones now, you know, we're seeing the T-90 is rolling with the diesel engine. It's just interesting to see them going back to what's tried and tested for their main battle tanks, but I really do admire the fact that they wanted to try something new. Overall guys, I love this tank. It always reminds me of the tank I used to play against in Armored Fist 2, which was a game I played as a kid, and it was always the tank in the game that I was scared shitless of, because it would always try and knock out my M1A2 Abrams, and most of the time if it got a round down target onto me, it would knock me out. So as a kid, when I used to see these tanks in video games, I used to think, actually this is quite a formidable tank. And honestly, I still think to this day, it is. It is still capable of doing some serious damage with that 125mm auto-loading gun. So there you have it guys, the T-80 main battle tank in all its glory. I thank you so much today for coming by and watching my video, I really do appreciate it. Guys, please hit that like button if you did enjoy today's video. Leave me a comment of any future upcoming videos you want me to do, or just how you felt about this video today, or just your opinion on the tank itself. Thanks again for watching, all the best, take care.